Hello, friends, and welcome back to 20 Questions With. For those of you who are new here, this is my fun way of introducing you to other costumers and costumers by asking them 20 silly questions. Today, we're talking to Amy of Swimming in a Sea of Estrogen. Welcome to my channel, Amy. Hi. Hi. I have a funny thing about your handle, which I want to talk about oh, in a minute, okay. which is I used to be an admin for the CauseTube guide and you were always on my day. And I'd be oh. like, Amy, why so long? Why? Because I'd have to like <laughs> font so down your, your, I don't know if you ever noticed, but your font is like 0.5 smaller than everybody else's. No, I hadn't noticed, but it, it doesn't fit. surprise me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Every time I'd be like, Amy, why? <laughs> why are you doing this to me? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so can you tell us about yourself and your channel and why you named it? What um, you did? Well, I'm, like you said, I'm Amy. Um, I'm in my late forties and I didn't start costuming until I was in my late thirties, but I have been sewing as long as I can remember all my life. Oh, and with them, um, with my costuming, I started out doing LARP costumes. Um, mm -hmm. when Todd and I started dating about 10 years ago, he asked me to go to a LARP and he said, you know, just go once. And if you hate it, I'll never ask you to go again. And so I threw, threw a costume together really quick that weekend and went and, you know, you get to beat the crap out of people with foam swords all weekend. It's fun. You can't. So that kind of got me started back on costumes. And, um, but as far as my channel name, I was a single mom for a long time and I have three daughters. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I was literally swimming in a sea of estrogen because there was so many hormones going on at my house, yeah. you know, and then by the time I started doing this, I was just kind of like, it's stuck. I, you know, I couldn't really change it. I didn't feel like changing it. Now yeah. it's just, yeah. Okay. Do you want to talk about your channel a little bit? Like what you do on your channel and stuff? Sure. I, on my channel, I try to do basic tutorials if it's something that I haven't done before, but mostly it's just uh, videos showing what I make. I try to release weekly, but I don't kill myself trying to do that. So I usually Ooh. have team, no deadline. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I usually have one big project I'm working on at a time. Um, and so I can get those videos in as I get those pieces done. Mm -hmm. um, and I try to do littler projects in between just to, because I need, you know, something not big to work on in between all the little projects. So yeah, that's what I share on my channel. That's what these videos are for me is like the things I do in between while I'm making the big thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Are you ready to play 20 questions? I think so. Yeah. All right. What is your favorite flavor? Candy. Plain old milk chocolate, ice cream, vanilla. Okay. What about like your favorite flavor? Like chocolate, in life? For sure. Chocolate. Yeah. Okay. Chocolate. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what mine is. It's like that umami flavor, I guess. Mm. Like mm. meat has it, but also like really good, like noodles have it, like Asian noodles have it sometimes. Just oh. like, around, like, mm, like I don't know what the flavor is called, but it's good. I might, <laughs> yeah, I might need to change my, yeah, that flavor you get with a really, really good, well cooked steak that's mm -hmm. just juicy. And that I think, see, right now, even my mouth is watering. That yeah. is probably my absolute favorite flavor. Yeah. You have that first bite and you're like, yeah, it's so good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yep, it's that would be it. I always Chocolate's talk about how there's <laughs> like, there's little firing things in my brain that start like going off when I have that, like, um, Neanderthal brain, like, <laughs> mm -hmm. like, yes, <laughs> we have won. This is good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is the last gift you gave someone? Well, partial gift. The last gift I gave anybody was we paid for the last little bit of our daughter's computer that she was saving to buy and build. Oh, yeah. So that was kind of a gift. Yes. Yeah, sure. Um, That's oh, I know what it was. Last gift I actually just bought and gave as a gift was Todd is um, your classic nerd sci-fi guy and he loves Firefly and Serenity uh -huh. and there's this book that's been floating around on Amazon forever and uh -huh. I don't even know I haven't even looked at the book but I'd had it on my drop list forever and Finally, you know, I just bought that and gave it to him because it dropped below a certain price or something. But yeah, that was the last gift I gave that wasn't. That's a good gift. Like Firefly and Serenity are 
big winners in our house also. Yeah. For sure. yeah. yeah. What did you want to be when you grew up? I think, oh, I know. I, when I was really little, um, so uh, my dad was a professor at a university, a really small liberal arts college in Eastern Oregon. And they had a glass blowing studio that mm. we could go to whenever we wanted. And so I always wanted to be a glass blower because it was, you could see them from my dad's office. So we would go over there and watch them blowing glass. And I was just fascinated with it all the time. So that's what I wanted to be. Um, I have, and Uh it is hard, Yeah, but I didn't try it there. I tried it. um, I was on a cruise once and we stopped in. No, no, I was in, um, I wasn't in a cruise. I had gone on vacation to Cabo and Mm -hmm. we went to a glass blowing factory in Cabo and I tried it there and it's so hard, Uh, (laughs) so hard. So I actually used to blow glass weirdly enough seriously (laughs) yeah I never got excellent at it I there was a place called baggy bay area glass institute and in the bay area and they used to run out of someone's backyard the person who's like I don't know if it's the person who started it but the the kiln and it was like in someone's detached garage basically and Mm -hmm. we built a kiln and had all the stuff and we used to blow and we we'd collect pumpkins that we would make and we would sell the pumpkins at Halloween time at the great baggy pumpkin patch um, to raise money to keep the studio going. And then for every four hours you volunteered making pumpkins for baggy, you earned an hour of accrued time that you could use the studio for your own purposes. But glass blowing is a team sport, (laughs) right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So you have to kind of learn how to do all the positions. Like you go through the ranks of learning how to do them. And right as I got to the point where I was like the lead person and, and forming the pumpkin and doing this stuff and other people were popping the bubble and handing me things and whatever, um, they, they switched their model of how everything worked and they got a big professional store shop, like a huge space that had like, Mm -hmm. you know, a coffee bar and stuff in it, um, like went corporate and got like a, a board of directors and like all sorts of stuff, like got really big in it. And what ended up happening was they said, okay, you can still do this, but every, for every two hours, so you have to have four hour slots for every two hours, you can use your own time, but you have to pay for the other two hours. And we're, we're all like, that's not what we signed up for. Like we signed up for, we do labor, you give us free time. That's how this exchange worked. And now you're changing the rules. And also it's like a hundred dollars an hour and you have two other people come with you. So like, Eh. so basically I did all this work and I also worked on their website I had like hundreds of hours accrued and I lost them all oh that sucks but I did learn how to blow glass so I can make a pumpkin I can pull a flower I can make like your average cup stuff like that I'm not Mm -hmm. excellent nothing is you know amazing but yeah 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 so I think I think beyond blowing glass I wanted to do something artistic it's always been something Mm -hmm artistic but I don't know anything specific so cool does pineapple belong on pizza absolutely not oh you're you're the first (laughs) absolutely not I am yeah absolutely not I but I'm kind of a freakish eater too I don't salty and sweet don't go together like (gasps) peanuts on ice cream is wrong pineapple on pizza I just now if it were a dessert pizza you know, where it wasn't a savory flavor, then by all means, yeah, I would, I, I could totally go for that, but I can't do, I have a really hard time with those really, um, like a pear gorgonzola type salad. Uh I, I really like those, but it has taken me years and years and years to be able to eat the pear and the, the cheese at the same time. So that's interesting. But yeah, no, no pineapple on pizza. Okay. Half of my family will disown me for saying that out loud, but yeah. (laughs) I like a pineapple on a pizza. It is my favorite, my favorite one, but also I love sweet and salty together. So yeah, you're like, no, (laughs) no, no. And I love pineapple. I mean, pineapple is one of my favorite fruits to eat, but I, yeah, I can't do it on pizza. All right. Can't bring myself. (laughs) Yeah. If you could trade places with any other person for a week, famous or not, living or dead, real or fictional, who would it be? Not Boudicca herself, but one of Boudicca's warriors. Oh. So I could observe Boudicca in her environment. 
because I don't know a lot about her, but I'm fascinated by her. That's one, one part of history that I really want to look into a lot further. Mm -hmm. And I just haven't done because I haven't had the time to sit down and dedicate to do it because I feel like it's something I'm going to really want to dedicate a lot of time to. Mm -hmm. Um, But just the fact that she was such a prolific warrior and, and was so successful and powerful, it's fascinating to me. So I don't, I wouldn't want to trade places with her, but I would want to be able to observe her. Yeah. No, that's an awesome answer. I like it. If you were arrested with no explanation, what would your friends and family assume you had done? Stealing a piece of artwork, probably. Oh. That's what they would assume. Or, or a dress from a museum or something like that. Interesting. All right. Yeah. If you could learn any one skill in the world without trying, like Matrix style, what would you pick? Coding. Coding. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a solid answer. Yeah. And this is kind of, you know, I do... Uh, graphic design and marketing is what I do for my day job. But part of that, our company is small enough that I also do the web development, web design. But, Mm -hmm. you know, for somebody who doesn't know a lot of coding or HTML, it's thank God for WordPress and Mm -hmm. WYSIWYG and all that. Um, But I think as a web producer, I'm like, F that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that, having a coding knowledge, I I think it could benefit anybody. I think that you could use it in any realm doing anything. So, well, as a person who does HTML for their living, I can tell you HTML isn't actually considered coding because it's a markup language. So it's just like English between brackets. So that's actually pretty easy to learn. I would learn like, you know, Java and C++ and like hardcore coding because I think you could make a ton of money. Yeah, that's probably more it. Because I do know some basic HTML and mm-hmm. it's really, it's not difficult. It's just it's the words other... with brackets. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's all it is. But yeah. um, so it would be the, the more difficult parts of the development yeah. that I just don't. And again, it's just something I don't have time to dedicate to learn. Yeah, that's a, it's a really great skill and it can make you a ton of money, but also it can like solve a lot of problems in your life. Like you can just like whip up a solution to things pretty easy. Um, My job is weird because as a person who's a web producer, my job is to talk to coders who speak one language and also talk to the artists who speak a completely different language. And these people do not understand each other very often. (laughs) Not at all. I'm like, I hear what this guy says and then I turn to this person and I'm like, okay, you have two weeks and that two weeks starts over every single day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah, it's, it's a, like my job is to amalgamate the two parts of a website, the art and the code mm-hmm. and to like make them one. And it's a weird job. Like you have to be able to sort of navigate weird waters with people who are, very specific about what they are doing yeah 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 Yeah. and it's there's a lot of black and white involved in there too there's no yeah I mean for them not necessarily for the actual process but yeah Yeah. and a lot of people care very deeply about something very small that doesn't matter but somehow will take 300 hours to fix (laughs) yeah yeah Mm -hmm. yep totally get that (laughs) what is something that a lot of people are missing out on because they don't know about it nature. It's not that they don't know about it. It's that they're not exposed to it. I had a really unique childhood. My, like I already said, my dad's biology professor, but he ran an outdoor school in the summer for the university Mm -hmm. uh, in the mountains here. And first of all, I live in really rural Eastern Oregon Mm -hmm. and we're in a valley surrounded by four different mountain ranges while he ran the summer school, we lived up there in the mountains all summer Mm -hmm. long. And, you know, by the time I was 10, I could have told you almost every native plant in Northeastern Oregon, just because that was the type of childhood I had. But I I could also tell you what the guts of a taxidermied squirrel look like, because that was part of his job. But there's so many things that are, I mean, I'm just thinking about our area that so many things that are within an hour of here Mm -hmm. that a lot of people, even in this tiny little town, never experience because they're not 
exposed to it or they're not given the opportunity to it. And I think it's probably the same in the Bay Area. I mean, oh, I know sure. it's really populated, but I'm I'm sure there's places where people could get out and see things. It's, it's and not even things like about. that. It's like literally my next door neighbor is the county park. Like there yeah. are so many, like the Redwood Forest is 15 minutes from us. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah. yeah. And that's, and I've been through there and it's amazing. And I'm thinking, mm-hmm. you know, how many other things am I, are, am I missing out on because I haven't been able to go see them, but how yeah. many things are, are these people missing out on because they just don't go or don't yeah. have the knowledge to go. So mm-hmm. I think, and it could be anywhere in the world, you know, if you're talking about the deserts in Africa or the rainforests or yeah. primordial forests in Poland, you know, oh, yeah. uh-huh. I've been to one of those and they're amazing. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think yeah. it would be anything nature. Yeah. We have this place called, or a road called Skyline, which is up on top of the Santa Cruz Mountains. It would take me literally 15 minutes to drive to it. And if you drive down it, there's something like 26, like distinct ecosystems along that path of like 20 miles. It's crazy. It's crazy. And it's really cool. Like you go, you go through redwood forests, you go through valleys, you go through like, and it's, it's just like right there. (laughs) So yeah. yeah. You know, Pax does their walks every day and with the little piece to you on Instagram. And I know the town that they live in. I've been there and I still see things that they're showing and sharing that I've never seen before. Yeah. So, you know, even in the same state. So. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I agree. My husband did this thing. <sighs> okay. So if you go to a <laughs> national park, you can buy this book called the passport and it's this fat book and it has page for every national park there is there are a lot let's just say there are a lot of there's a lot (laughs) and the goal is you go to each one and you get a passport stamp on each page and i am like don't you dare buy that because i am a completionist like if you give me that mission that is now (laughs) my entire life (laughs) he bought the book (laughs) not only did he buy the book we go to places like Haleakala National Park, right? In Hawaii. All right, we're here. You got the book? Oh, shit. (laughs) And then he tries to cop out with like, or like Maine, because he's from Maine, so we go to Maine. Mm -hmm. He didn't bring the book to Maine. Like he doesn't bring the book anywhere. It makes me nuts. And like you can, (laughs) you could just stamp a paper and then put it in the, and I'm like, no, it's got to be in the book. In the book. (laughs) I'm not coming back to this park. (laughs) <laughs> maybe he's doing it so that you do have to go back to the park because i'm sending his ass by himself no <laughs> no uh yeah uh uh-uh. yeah i would <laughs> i would either give up or i would have a really hard time with not completing it that would drive me nuts i'm threatening to bonfire the thing because i'm just like i can't i can't it's <laughs> niggling in the back of my mind all the time that it, we are not completing it it's not hap- it, like the papers that are floating around because he's trying to put them in. i'm like no Mm-mm. Mm-mm. you can't give someone like me like that. i'm a completionist and mm-hmm. like i'm ocd about this stuff like no <laughs> you could use mod podge and decoupage those in there and make it like an art book <laughs> I just <laughs> your brain's short circuiting right now i'm like no yeah i'm just i'm i told him no and he did it anyway and now now there's yeah. a rift in our relationship let me just say that <laughs> Do you have a stupid human trick? And if so, what is it? The only thing I can do is raise one eyebrow at a time. Oh, oh, whoa. I I can't do that. So I have. But I can't. I can't. I can't. My dad can do it really fast, but I can't. I can just do. I have no control over my eyebrows at all. I have, I have um, three looks. There's Noelle. There's Noelle surprise. And there's Noelle angry. (laughs) These are my three eyebrows. Like, I also don't have any forehead wrinkles because of that. But like, I have no, I cannot, if I want to, if I want to raise an eyebrow, I go. <laughs> That's well, I've eyebrows. got the, the, the forehead wrinkles and the, the, the concentration wrinkles right here, you know? So I call these the, um, the Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh yeah. He has a giant one. Like I sit in the middle of the screen and I'm like, he looks stressed out. And I like try to rub his little (laughs) right here for him. Cause I'm like, Oh, you're so stressed out, dude. (laughs) That's a good idea. Why are you focusing so hard? It's going to be okay, Leo. (laughs) 
But yeah, that's that's my stupid human trick is my eyebrows. All right, that's fair. I have a friend who can make his curl. They go like this. And he oh, can bring it like way it, Like up. he's doing the wave with it? Yes, and he can make them both do it and he can actually make them wave. Wow. I am like, that is an yeah, incredible amount of skill with your forehead muscles. Yeah. <laughs> Like, and how do you develop that muscle? I right? Just... Like how bored were you when you're sitting there as a child going like mm-hmm. Yeah, like mm-hmm. <laughs> right? I think I learned it cuz my dad could do it. So I don't know if I if, if it's like a genetic skill that I mm-hmm. have because my dad can do it, but I know like rolling your tongue is. My mm-hmm. mom and my sister can both roll their tongues, but my dad and I can't. So I don't know. I'm convinced that it is genetic and here's why. So my bestie does this thing when she, when I tell her something and she thinks I'm like, you know, BSing her, her eyebrow, it's, she doesn't know she's doing it. Her eyebrow flicks, it flicks up and down like super fast. Like I can tell that she doesn't believe me because she's like flick. And I'm like, dude, you have a tell, stop it. What do you want? Like, so here's the reason I think it's genetic. She has a daughter and I was changing her daughter's diaper for her when her daughter was like, six months no like a year old maybe I don't know somewhere in there Mm -hmm. and I almost dropped the baby on the ground because the baby did it at me and I was like oh my god she did it and she goes I've been waiting so long for you to figure out that she can do that (laughs) (laughs) and now her daughter does it at me (laughs) you're like okay yeah what don't um, you believe I enjoy talking to little kids as if they're adults so like they'll come up and they'll be like um you know, they'll tell me some problem they have. And I go, oh, wait till you have to pay taxes. And they just like, they they don't know what to do with that information because they don't understand what I'm talking about in any way. And if you just consistently talk to them that way. So she just like flicks her eyebrow at me and runs away. And I'm like, she is your daughter. <laughs> She's totally your daughter. Yeah. 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 Kids are funny. But yeah. yeah. Would you ever try space tourism if you had the money for it? Yes. But not because... I want to. Todd's man crush is Elon Musk. Oh, uh-huh. and if, yeah, um, I think it would be fascinating to be in space and to see the earth, but I think um, I, it would terrify me. Mm-hmm. But if, if there were an opportunity for us to go into space, if we can afford it, then, you know, go hang out at the space station for a couple of days. Yeah. Uh, I'd do it in a heartbeat just because it would make my other half so ecstatic. I think he'd be nuts. Would you let him go without you? Absolutely. Okay. And and if that was um, only one of you can go, see ya, honey. Have a good time. Don't die. <laughs> yeah. 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 Pretty much. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Fair enough. What, in your opinion, is the most amazing animal? The Amir tiger. Oh, okay. Why? Or just tigers in general. I mm-hmm. just think they're fascinating. They're um, real big. <laughs> they are huge. Yeah. Like um, lions but they're, have nothing on tigers. <laughs> well, and just the way they're camouflaged with their stripes, you know, you think they're such a bold, bright colored animal, but when you get them in there with all the shade and the mm-hmm. sun dappled on them, you can't see those suckers. They're going to sneak up on you so fast, but yeah, they're beautiful. Yeah, they are. There's like a giant cat sitting five feet from you and you don't know it. Yeah. And that cat could easily eat you. Yeah. Yeah. It's terrifying. But yeah, I just think they're fascinating. They're so beautiful. They're so beautiful at like all times. Yeah. I remember when I went to the zoo when I was little, because I lived in San Diego. So we got to go to like wild animal park and they have lions and tigers. And I got to see them and I tripped out when I realized that tigers are bigger than lions. I was like, what? I didn't realize that until I was a little bit older too. And I was, I had no idea. I thought for sure, you know, cause you always hear the lioness, the king of the jungle, you know, so you think Mm -hmm. king, they're the biggest, but no. Different jungle. Yeah. Um, They're now the Sumatran tigers are a lot smaller. They're Mm -hmm. probably even smaller than lions because they're only, the males are like 300 pounds. That's small. Only. (laughs) Yeah. That's still a huge cat, you know, when you think about it. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, if I go incapacitated, my cats would eat me. So, like, imagine that being 300 pounds, right? Like, yeah. I always say yeah. that the difference between me and death is that my cats don't have thumbs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that. Cats, as much as I like cats, they are evil beings. Yeah. They are, 
uh, maybe not evil, conniving. That's a yeah. good word. I mean, my kitties are all sweet. They're, I have seven snugglers. They all want to snuggle at all times. They're super cuddly kitties. And also, if I moved too quickly, they would pounce on me and eat me in a heartbeat. Yep. If they could. A hundred percent. What luxury is totally worth the price? You know what? Pedicures. Pedicures are totally worth just because it, nobody ever takes care of their feet. I mean, yeah. unless <laughs> you're an older person with diabetes and you have to have your feet taken care of. Mm-hmm. Um, because you're starting to get neuropathy, mm-hmm. man, going and getting pedicure is, yeah, That's the thing. I do that all the time. Yeah. I totally love it. I went for a pedicure. So in China, you can go get like massages are like 20 bucks. Pedicures are like 20 bucks. Like you can get anything for $20. It's fantastic. Um, we went to this place that was doing massages, like, um, it's, it's like a sitting massage in a chair and then they also give you a pedicure and like a little bit of a head rub and like stuff like that. And my husband had never been like in any thing like that. So I'm like, do you want to do this? And he was like, okay. And this dude came in and started giving my husband a pedicure and then just started yelling at him and he would pick up my feet and point at them and yell at him in Chinese and then pick up his foot and frown and yell at him in Chinese and then pick up my foot and be like, yes. And pick up his foot and be like, no, <laughs> it was hysterical. I had such a great time with that. <laughs> because he hasn't taken care of his feet. Uh-huh. Yeah. Funny story. This is really funny. So Todd, Todd takes really good care of his feet, but um, he, I don't think he's ever maybe once had a pedicure. Mm-hmm. And last night, Harley gave him a pedicure because he had a corn starting. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, she has a, a tray at home and she's a stylist, just mm-hmm. fair, fair disclosure there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but he's so ticklish oh, uh-huh. that it was the funniest thing I've watched in a long time, but his mm-hmm. feet were actually in really good shape, except for right at the heels. But it was mm-hmm. that same kind of thing. Like, dude, you need to take care of this part better. Yeah. There were razor blades involved in my husband's and it was weird. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. I was yeah. like, so he had lots of calluses they had to cut. Oh, off and it was and... all come came off. It was it was absolutely disgusting. And also, I was just like <laughs> laughing through the entire thing. It was hysterical. <laughs> but his like, feet felt good afterwards. Yeah, I I was like, I'm buying you a pet egg for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which song has the ability to cheer you up? Jeremiah was bullfrog, by Three Dog Night, every yeah. single time. That's that's or great. um. What is it? Happy Justin Timberlake. Oh Those yeah. Two, anytime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those are great. I songs. used to turn on the, the three, the three dog night song as loud as I could handle it. And that's what I used to clean the house to because it was such a happy song. But, and, mm-hmm. and I don't even know that I listened to the words to understand what the lyrics were saying. Yeah. It just was, it was a good song. Yeah. Um, mine are like uptown funk, like, Oh um, Yeah. Yeah. And um, Lady Gaga's just, just Dance. Like, every time I hear that, I'm like, well, I guess we're having a party now. <laughs> I can't. I love Uptown Funk, but God. Yeah. Todd and his best friend are juveniles. Oh. <laughs> they are just, so they've changed the words to thumb in the butt is the last little bit of that. And I'm <laughs> like, so anytime I hear it now, I can't hear it without uh-huh. hearing the thumb in the butt. I'm like, mm-hmm. Ugh stop you're ruining the songs so yeah and now everybody's gonna hear that yeah pretty much you have spread the musical herpes yeah uptown thumb in the butt that's what yeah yeah they're 12 yeah mine is too yeah which one book have you always wanted to read but never got around to it withering heights yeah i've never read it i've any actually and any of the Bronte novels, I've never read any of those. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, Wuthering Heights would be one right on the top of the list. I've read a couple like Bronte novels and I was, I'm going to get hate mail. I was not impressed. I was like, this is super boring and I hate this ending. No, I love Yeah. Um, and I love Jane Austen. And I, I also I, think Jane Austen. I don't, I actually don't know that I could sit down and read Jane Austen, but I can listen to Jane Austen. Yeah. But yeah, I haven't read a lot of those authors. I will say I've been trying to read Good Omens uh-huh. and I cannot, I cannot, I, it's the hardest book for me to get through. And I loved the TV series. Uh-huh. 
I loved it. But so now I, I think I just need to get the audiobook and listen to it because get the I haven't audiobook. been able to. Yeah. The reader for the audiobook is so good. Is he? Yeah. It's like the perfect person. Like he's, he's exactly the right amount of British. Um, oh, perfect. And yeah. And that's like critical for that book. Uh, good Omens is like in my top three books of all time. Like I love Good Omens. I really loved the, the, and of course it's David Tennant. So yeah, um, that, I really that loved that. Same... But story though like it ends completely differently oh does it yeah it's not exactly the same yeah well and maybe that's my problem is that I watched that first and now I'm trying to read the book so I can only see them as Uh David Tennant and oh I think that the casting was good but there's stuff about the book that is decidedly different and um you get perspective on people in a completely different way in the book than you did in the show um so it's not all from the perspective of those two it's from the perspective of okay. people who are on the ground well so, the nun I, or the yeah the satanic nun is one who talks of quite a bit uh, um like briefly in the beginning I remember in yeah the, yeah but then later it's not it's mostly about agnes nutter um yeah and i haven't made it i mean i really haven't made it very far so i should just get the audiobook scrap it and start over yeah yeah or get the audiobook yeah it's great when you if you can get into it and if you can't like it is definitely super dry humor like mm-hmm. British humor you know like yeah you've got which unbelievably British which I, yeah which I love I love dry humor and British humor but yeah. yeah I mean Neil Gaiman is one of my favorite authors so I'm I that's the thing that got me into him though so yeah yeah which is weird because it's actually a lot of terry in that too so like and i never wrote into terry like until recently i read my first terry pratchett book like a couple months ago so and now i'm like there's a whole new world like i feel like jasmine like (laughs) if you read uh i don't think it's terry pratchett it's not no it's not um it's called the wizard's first rule no series Mm -mm. It's a good series. I've only made it through through the first two books, but our youngest daughter, she's through she's 19. When she was in fourth grade, she was reading at like a college level. Mm-hmm. And so we were having to find books that were entertaining for her, but that were also semi-appropriate mm-hmm. men- mentally, you know? So yeah. um, Todd's like, just have her read this book and see how she goes. She went through the entire series and these books are like six or 700 pages. They're oh, wow. ridiculously okay. long in two years I think it was a it was so fast awesome. um but that's a good it was a good book too the first one I just haven't made time to read the others yet so are they are they funny British or they're not British well they might be British I don't know oh, Terry good good kind that's who wrote oh, Terry okay. good kind all right yeah so I don't know that they're British but they're they're good fantasy books okay. I don't know that there's much humor in them Mm, okay. little bits here and there yeah mm-hmm. if given the option to time travel to your past and give yourself a one sentence piece of advice what age would you choose to go to and what would you say 15 and I would say popularity is a currency that runs out at the end of high school f them uh, all yeah you know basically something along that lines you know popularity is not important after these four years are over so don't worry about it right now because your life is going to be fine later on. Yeah. So I was totally a nerd, not, not popular, total wallflower, wanted to be invisible type person. Mm -hmm. So yeah, very concerned about others, not necessarily opinions, but being noticed. I didn't want to be noticed. That stuff is high on the priority list then. Yeah. 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 I was um, exactly how I am now. Like I'm mm-hmm. not popular, but I somehow know everyone and everybody's cool. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, like I wasn't popular and I wasn't unpopular. I was just like, I had friends who were popular and I had friends who were nerds and I had friends in band and I had friends in the drama club and I had friends, you know, like everywhere. And I did. Yeah. I, I ate lunch at a different spot every day kind of thing. Hanging yeah, out. And I would say. I had, I had friends in, or acquaintances in each group, but I didn't really belong to any one group. And, yeah. and I didn't like to extend myself into other groups to get to know mm. people. Mm. So, and so, so that's on me as well as. Whatever. Yeah. I did that. I wouldn't say I was mentally. unpopular. I would say it was just invisible. Yeah. That's a horrible way to put it, but 
you know, a lot of people are actually like that then. Yeah. 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 Or feel like that, even though they're not, I took, I I was in APIB and we had a psych class that was my junior year. And one of the things that they did in it blew my mind and was one of the most profound experiences I've ever had in my life, which is that class was full of a lot of very popular and very smart people. Mm -hmm. And every day for a month, because there was 30 of us, was your day. And for the entire class period, you sat around in a circle. And when it was your day, you went to the middle and you worked your way around the circle. And every single person in that class told you something that they liked about you. Oh. And as a like 16 year old, that is mind blowing. When you hear someone who's super popular go, I was really nervous on my first day of this class and you talked to me and that made me feel so much better. And I really like that you did that and that you're such a nice person, blah, blah, blah. And you didn't even know that they ever noticed you before. Yeah. It's a thing. I think everyone yeah. should have to do that. I think that's a great exercise. It is, you know, because yeah. a lot of people, you know, I always thought I was invisible, but now, mm-hmm. you know, 30 years later, there are people that I don't really care to ever talk to again. But at the same time, there are people that I thought never would have noticed me who have said, Hey, you know, I really have enjoyed getting to know you better as an adult. I wish we'd known each other better Yeah, as teenagers or whatever. So. Yeah. A lot of people also come back from their reunions and, and find out that like the popular kids were actually having a really hard time. And the popular kids actually mm-hmm. thought that they were super awesome and never told them. Mm-hmm. And so, Yeah. It's, it's crazy yeah. how close you are at that. Yeah. I think my piece of advice, I would go back to just before I turned 18, like literally a couple days before and go learn about compound interest and then just, oh God, go. yes. <laughs> like, yeah. In both directions, like credit cards and saving, learn yep. about compound interest. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. So if it, if it weren't the popularity as a, as a currency that ends in four years, it would be the learn how to budget. Yeah. Because that is not a skill I had for a long, long time. Until I was like 40. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you could meet any historic figure and ask them only one question, who would it be and what would you ask? The Queen's Elizabeth. You get one. And the f- pick, pick one. Oh, Queen Elizabeth II. Okay. And I think I would ask her what it has been like watching the world go through the, it's not the industrial revolution, obviously, but the, the exponential changes it has made technologically in the last, you know, 90, what, three years. Mm-hmm. You know, I just, as a person in her position, what is it like watching that? Yeah. I think that would be something I would like to know. I'm just, she fascinates me. You and I've kind of talked about this before, but she's absolutely fascinating to me. You know, when you're however old and you're never expecting to be on the throne and then all of a sudden, boom, you're going to be queen. And then you're queen forever. Ever. Like, yeah. Ever. I mean, I, this is coming up on her 60th year, isn't it? So if it weren't the, you know, what was it? What has it been like for you to see all of these changes, you know, basically going from the 20s to the 20s? um, It would be the, you know, what was it? What did you feel like that moment when you found out that you were going to be basically super quickly educated to be queen because it had never been in the works before? You know, Mm -hmm. what, what was that feeling like? I think I can't imagine it would be anything but terrifying to all of a sudden be thrown in that position. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I, I think just like watching technology for that long change. When I was little, I realized like when my grandfather was little flight wasn't a thing. Yeah. And then he watched not like go to the moon. Like that's crazy. Like he got his ice delivered in by a carriage with a horse like yep. for his ice box <laughs> yeah. right? and now he has an iPhone you know <laughs> you're just like what I mean he he passed several years ago but like at the time he had an iPhone I was just like how mind-blowing would that be and he was like a computer scientist too so like he was oh, not wow. on, like he taught it um and he taught he was on the front edge yeah and so he saw it all and he experienced it all and he was like into it he was he was one of the reasons that I like sci-fi is because he was super into sci-fi Mm-hmm. So yeah, 
um he's he was a cool dude but yeah. yeah all right if there was a room filled with everything you've ever lost what item would you be most excited to recover i'm trying to think of anything i've lost that i really care about i've lost my first engagement ring and Ooh. that's not even the one i would pick when i was little i lost my teddy bear and that was a yeah. emotional crisis to a five-year-old Oh no. Yeah. There is, um, it's the one thing I can think of that I've lost that I really miss. And it was a silver bracelet that I got in Mexico. And it looked like somebody had taken almost like making Damascus steel, you know, where you take all the layers, Mm -hmm. but they didn't get them completely blended. And then they took three strands and braided them. And it was just one of those bracelets where you can bend it open and, and, Mm -hmm. and tighten it on your wrist. That's the, really the only thing I can think of because I haven't, I mean, good for you that you've never lost anything that was that important. Like, I've lost yeah, so much I mean, stuff that was that important. I had a house fire that I lost everything. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's the thing. I haven't had any um, real tragic things like that happen. Yeah. It's okay. If that's your answer, that's your answer. Yeah. Yeah, that's got to be my answer. I, I mean, I think part of it, too, is that I just, I don't care about things. Yeah. You know, I just, I don't get attached to things like, you know, I do have some earrings that my grandma gave me and, and those kind of things, but they, I, I haven't lost any of them. And yeah. those are about the only things I've ever been really attached to. So, I mean, you don't have to be attached to something to be like excited that you found it though. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I would probably say that bracelet is the right. only thing I can really think of that I would be super excited about. I don't really care about stuff anymore either because I had a house fire and like, I yeah. know what it's like to not have any stuff anymore and it's actually fine. Yeah. <laughs> it sucks it does suck it's not actually fine but it's actually like you don't need as much of your stuff as you think you do <laughs> yeah yeah how long would you last in a zombie apocalypse not at all because <laughs> okay. i'm like you i would join the zombies as fast as i could because i don't like fear yeah i don't want to have to freak out about oh my god are they gonna get me i would just yeah. volunteer to be tribute let me let them at me my greatest so, fear is fear itself for sure like, yeah I, absolutely I, I am afraid of being afraid I hate being afraid I absolutely hate it yeah and so I think that's yeah I wouldn't last up but I would be voluntarily I wouldn't last because yeah. I wouldn't want to last same so who is your favorite cartoon character Wiley Coyote but the one that doesn't talk not the Wiley Coyote that talks there's a Wiley Coyote that talks yeah, there's, um, I think later on, and I think that he's smart and he has glasses and he talks, but it's not that, it, yeah, it's the original Wiley Coyote that doesn't talk and gets the crap beat out of him all the time. And, yeah. yeah. I'm not into any of these like 3D versions of any of the things either. I'm like, what did you do to Bugs Bunny? Stop that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Nuh-uh. Give me my flat Elmer Fudd and I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is your 20th question. Okay. There, there's obviously the last question, but if you could have any artifact, piece of art or thing from any art gallery, what would you have? I would like to have a ballet painting by Degas for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, those, uh, there's a bunch of them in the National Gallery in London that you can go look at. Oh, yeah. They're beautiful. They are beautiful. And yeah. they have them with like the, there's bronze ones also like mm-hmm. ballerinas and they're in there with them. And that's really cool. Yeah. At the house in New Orleans, um, they have a bronze statue out front, but inside the house, there's lots of different um, examples of his work as well as in, of course, including like his, his life and mm-hmm. how he came to New Orleans and then went back. And yeah. Yeah. So that's I really think awesome. they're just beautiful. Yeah, they are. They're beautiful pieces of art for sure. All right. Super controversial bonus question. Is a hot dog a sandwich and why? Technically, yes. Because it's technically meat right and is a piece the best kind of right. Mm-hmm. Yes. Huh. Um, however, if I was at a restaurant and ordered a sandwich and they brought me a hot dog, I'd be really annoyed. Yeah, for sure. Or if I was somewhere and ordered a hot dog and they brought me a sandwich, mm-hmm. like I would be really annoyed. Sure. So, well, it, it's technically a sandwich. I, I mean, this is a, it's a, a taxonomy question. It's not a like, what do you call yeah. it in real life at a restaurant question. It's just yeah. anything. So, yeah. 
Yeah, technically, yes. Technically, yes. What did you answer during COVID? Like, which badge did you get? Uh, I got the tacos or the the hot dogs, the sandwich. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, during COVID, we had there was a badge situation, and I had a badge yeah. for. I asked a question. I was like. And if you said yes, you got a, a yes hot dog badge back. And if you said no, you got a no hot dog badge back. Um, and it was surprising that it was actually about even. Like, yeah. Weirdly, I didn't yeah, expect that. Especially yes if you go through through these videos, it's slightly skewed to no at this point. But there are more yeses rolling in. Yeah. At the yeah. beginning, and I it think was it's just. Out. Oh yeah. Well, and I think if you go by the a slice of bread with whatever peanut butter and jelly or meat or whatever between it mm -hmm. then then no it's not a sandwich but then like like you have said in europe they eat their sandwiches open-faced so oh don't talk about sandwiches. that because now scandinavians will yell at me scandinavians yell at me either way <laughs> scandinavians will come Sorry. Talking, we have open-faced sandwiches and then if i say something about that scandinavians will come yell at me about no no don't drag us into this that's not actually a sandwich and i'm just like <laughs> scandinavians okay. stand down <laughs> okay <laughs> We won't talk about the open face sandwiches. We're never bringing up Scandinavia again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but I do Fair talk enough. about like uh, things on a split roll, like po' boys mm -hmm. and subs and stuff like that a lot, because those are good examples of things on a roll. Yeah. 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 And um, and they're technically sandwiches. So yeah. It's called Subway sandwiches. Yep. <laughs> Although in Ireland it's called Subway cake. <laughs> they ruled what? The Is it really? No, it's not. Um, but they rule oh. that the sandwich bread isn't actually bread. It's actually cake because it has too much sugar in it. Oh. I wonder that if they're only sense. talking about the white bread, though, because the whole wheat bread doesn't actually have that much sugar in it. Probably. I'm a sandwich artist. I've been in Subway before. <laughs> I haven't worked at Subway, but I did work at Taco Time. Oh, yum. So I can ground beef like, like no one's business. Did you watch my ex- excursion with Rebecca where we went to taco time I watched it but I don't remember you going to taco time I think no. we went to taco time do they have like taco tater tots basically there I think so, so yeah that's a menu on yeah that's where we went we went to yeah. a taco time because like you know I love tacos <laughs> and I was Definitely. like this is weird taco bell huh <laughs> yeah but they also like yeah. you order a taco I think it there there was something weird like I ordered a taco but what I got was a burrito like I'm like, this isn't a uh, taco. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a soft taco. Yeah, but even a soft taco is is still form, formed like a taco. Yeah, they were all on like burritos, yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, no, wrong. That's yeah. a burrito. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining me, Amy. I will leave a list of Amy's accounts down below so you can go check her out and show her some love. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below about what you guys are up to. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. It was awesome. Yeah, it's lots of fun.